Hello, 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 everybody. So sorry about being on late today. It's Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes, and today we're going to make a double dial slide. Now, I have not finished making this one yet because we're going to do it together, but just to show you the mechanism that this is all about, this is the main mechanism, right? So this is a die that has come from a company called TLC Designs. This is her only product. She came up with this idea and she sent me one. So I said I would make one with it because I thought it was kind of cool. And I'm going to show you, we're going to be assembling all the bits. We're going to do two different cards with this die, but let me show you how to set it up. So this is the die system. I already have it on a magnetic mat and there are washers just to help you. But the main pieces you need to die cut out are the main piece. You have the dial, you have your little slider, and then you get to use your brads. Hi, Renee. So how many of you guys have brads hanging around that, I mean, I have a whole little jar of them, and it doesn't matter about the color because you're going to cover them up anyway. So easy enough. So when you actually go through and you do your, you cut out your item. Yeah, she paid so I can show you. Basically, you're just going to lay this down. Right. And then you go ahead and it's not this piece, sorry. You place this piece right here. And if you want to like tape it in place, that's fine. And then you die cut that whole thing out. I kept screwing up and I forget it. I kept forgetting to place um, this piece inside. And so I would have it already die cut out. And then I would just lay this where this was supposed to be by putting this back together and going, okay, well this, whoops, there we go. And then I do this and go, okay, well, it's supposed to go there. And then I would die cut that out. So it doesn't really matter. You can put them together. You don't have to. To your call. So that is what I have already done. I've already die cut this piece out. And then I die cut out the dial and the slidey part. Let me show you how to put the whole thing together. It's really, really quite simple. And it actually works really great. Yeah, don't we have tons of brads? <laughs> it was a thing, right? This is a great way to use your brad. Just four brads per car. So yay, you get to use them up. <laughs> Okay, so I always have to I have to have my little slidey thing. So here's a couple of notes. All the backs of the brads are in the back side of the card. So you don't have to worry about well, like which ones. So all the front brads, like the front flat facing, are facing the front of the card. The first one you want to do is you want to decide, well, what's the orientation of my card? And this is where it matters if you've got pattern paper. So you can have your slide dial come from this direction. So you can slide it from here. You could have it slide this direction. You could flip it over. You could have it slide from this direction or you could have it slide from the top. So there's, or you can have it from here. So there's so many different directions depending on which way you hold your paper. Now for this particular card, and I'll show you how, you have to kind of think about your orientation. I had a watering can and I wanted the watering can to come down and to pour. This is gonna be the mechanism that we're gonna be using on this card, is I want the watering can to pour. So I couldn't have my card facing this way because my watering can is going backwards, right? So you can totally do this form of a card, but for this particular one, I went this way. So I'm gonna show you how to build it going this, well, we'll do it the same way that I did on this card and then we'll play around with it. Okay, so how do you build the card? First thing you're gonna do is you place your dial in the corner and you can tell where the dial is. And the other question that people sometimes ask or that I even ask myself, do I have to use this die? No, I can cut out whatever piece I want because this piece is separate. I just have to place it. I have to cut a little edge to fit my dial in. And so I just have to place this in the right location. So you can kind of use this as a guide. So if you want to cut out this size, which fits on an A2 size paper or A2 size card, just make sure this fits in the right window. And so you don't have to have the, the edge there if you don't want to. So take your little brad, poke it through the front. Sorry, I'm doing lots of chatting here. And it goes right in the center. And don't worry about if which way it's orientated because this thing is supposed to move anyway. And then just go ahead and lock it in place. That's it, right? So now you've got the beginning of your dial. And you can make this whatever color. You can make this whatever color. It does not matter. Hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we'll be building the watering can. I wanted to show you the mechanisms of the die first. Let me get this out of the way. Less crap in the way. All right. The next one is, is roll ahead and roll your dial out. And we have to get this little piece right here connected. And again, all of, if you're looking at this one, all of the back side of the brads are what's facing this way. So we place this right here and we push. It doesn't matter. Just make sure your brads, whatever whatever they are, are big enough so that they don't go through the holes. 
All right, that's my big thing to use. So don't use the tiny, tiny, tiny brads. We want to use, you know, I don't whatever size. I've got a couple of different sizes that I've been using and they all work fine. You also don't want to use a brad that's um, got pointy edges because then it's going to start catching on things. So I just think a nice round brad works just fine. It does not matter the color. Okay, so now we have our dial. We have this funny little flap. Boop, boop, boop. So we have this funny little flap and then we have this piece. The funny flap, if you're looking at the card the same direction, this one that we just attached goes to the linear one, not the curved one, the linear one. And again, have all of the brads, the back sides facing the back of the card. So you poke through. Now there are washers that come with this. So if you want to put a washer, because maybe your brad's just a little too tiny or something like that, then you can put a washer to make it a little bit bigger. So they have different size washers that you can get, which basically just if you have the tiny, tiny brads, you can add a washer to it so it doesn't poke through and fall through this hole. That's all that is. But I think this is, I'm gonna test it. No, I mean, that's so far, no problems there. Things seem to be rolling pretty good there. I always kind of test as I go along. So that looks pretty good. And then the last one is, is that your last brad goes again from the front to the back. And that's how you know you've done it correctly. If you flip your card over and all you see is the brads on the back, you're good to go. Now, the link to this is on the on my site. And we're using close to my heart stamps and dies from Blue Skies. So all that is on my links down below. That's, that's the mechanism of the card, right? That's it. I wasn't too bad, right? And there are instructions on the back about where to place everything. Like this one goes on the vertical. And obviously you can refer back to this video. And the lady who created the die, she has a video about how to do that. She's got lots of inspiration. So the first card we're gonna make using this dial system. Now keep in mind, we could flip, flip the whole thing around the way that you put it together, but we could have had the dial over here and this have been the front of the card. So you can orientate it the whole way. It's a really cool mechanism that has a ton of different things. I mean, think about, and I'm, I'm gonna show you one where we're actually not gonna use the bottom mechanism. We're just gonna use this and we're gonna cover that up, pretend that's not even there, right? So there's so many different ways that you can kind of play around with that. Um, but we're gonna start off with one that's got the double system. So this is one that I cut out out of the Blue Skies paper. It looks like it's got a whole bunch of skies and I added a little bit of gra green grass. My daughter's looking at me <laughs> like, what are you doing, mom? And what I did is I wanted the watering can and I've already added my foam dots. So for this one, I'm double adding my foam, right? And so I'm just gonna attach that to the brad and then I always double check, is everything moving? And it is, yay. Now, when I added my grass down here and I made a boo-boo the first time when I did my template, I cut this so that in the mechanism that this bottom paper actually went right up against where this little hole is and it was too thick and it kept getting caught. So if you're gonna add another layer of paper to the front of the card, just make sure it goes below your sliding mechanism. Otherwise, it's gonna mess things up. All right, I am now wanting to have, oops, and I already cut, stamped and colored this in. So this is just a little flower. I wanna have my watering can come down and water my flower, right? So we're gonna have a little flower here. So I'm gonna put a little, and I figured out this is also things. You're gonna see that I screwed up on a bunch of adhesive back here. I wanna have my adhesive on my um, pad. So I actually go through, and this has got a little bit of adhesive. Oh, I screwed this up because I was messing around with it. So you could do a double-sided tape. There's lots of different options that you could do for this. Oh, I'm also almost out of adhesive. That's not gonna help. So you could do a double sided tape. You could do all different kinds of things. Just make sure you got enough sticky on there. And I got enough sticky. I, I suggest putting the sticky on here versus adding it to here because if you apply too much, then you might stick to the surrounding parts of the paper. And then I'm just gonna put it right kind of smack in the center. There we go. And I found if I kind of flare this up just a tiny bit to make sure nothing is sticking and then check my die again. Oopsie, so it got stuck somewhere. Sometimes when I push, so I went through push too hard and this is another thing I found I, I like smashed my brad and I closed my brad up too tight you don't want these brads to be too tight and then it's not going to let it slide so you have to be careful about how much you like push on the card and we're going to prevent that by adding foam adhesive and so just making sure things slide sometimes you have to kind of so it's obviously moving it's just there's a little piece that was stuck 
and then there we go. So if I find, oh, the dial's not working, I'll grab from the brad and slide it, and whatever it is that was kind of getting a little bit stuck will get unstuck. And so there's that mechanism. Um, so how expensive? So this, the whole die was 18, is $18. The double dial system. So this one was 18. And the reason why dies are so expensive is because you're paying for the metal and for them to cut the metal. And she's pretty, so you're paying for this whole piece. Now she's got pretty smart because she put everything inside of this piece right here. So this right here is just, she's only paying for this amount of metal. So she figured out I could fit everything inside of here and it actually ended up being a little bit less expensive. So 18 is not too bad considering that I'm actually going to show you two different ways to use this card. One is where you have both of them interacting together. Okay. So you can have both of these interacting together, which is kind of cool. And I doubled up this, which is how this can go over top. And just think about the mechanism. You could have something, it's two things flying together. You could have like a space rocket meeting up with, you know, a planet that's moving. You know, there's all different ways. There's um, the lady who created this. She did one where it was a snowman throwing a hat to another snowman. And the snowman was jumping up to catch it. Or it could be a little kitty cat, you know, coming out of a box to catch a treat that's going flying by. So there's, there's lots of different cool things. All right. So then I just have this cool sticker sheet that came with the same um, thing. So I already added some pop dots on here and I'm going to line this up. So everything is up first. Actually, I'm going to go right kind of in the middle here and I'm going to line this up. And so this has got two foam dots on it. This has zero foam dots and this has one layer of foam. And you want to make sure that you don't put foam over top of this because you want this to be able to move this, this brad right here. So if you stick it on top, it's going to cause a problem. You also don't want to put any anything to impede the mechanism of this right here. So you got to kind of play around with whatever you stick here. Just be careful that you don't impede the movement. So I'm going to place my, I think I've got everything. And I just kind of, I open it up and go, okay, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And I kind of played around with this and I pulled it off. I didn't add any, oopsie, I've got, I misaligned a tiny bit. I had this lined up perfectly. So I need to have, so that my foam is not in the way of this flower. And I might do it so that everything is coming out and it just doesn't come all the way in, which is fine. To your card, you can do what you want. So these little pieces are kind of sticking out and this is not gonna be a perfect A2 size heart. So I wouldn't be able to put this into a, um, there we go, into a envelope, if that's the word. All right, and I'm kind of cool that they're sticking up a little bit. You don't, the next card we're gonna make, we don't have to worry about having multiple layers. And then there it is, our little slidey card all put together. Ta -da. <laughs> yes, you could also put all the foam around the brad. That was a good point. So you could put all the foam around the brad. I was just being careful that I didn't go in. I didn't go too far too out. So however you want to do that. And this little guy likes to kind of move on me because I kept pulling it off and putting it back on. So that way I would be ready for you guys. So this is the mechanism. And then how do you actually attach this to a card? So this fits on an A2 size card. As you can see, it's the perfect size to fit on an A2 size card. So you, but when you put everything on here, we don't want to impede with any of the mechanisms. So when you get your foam dots, and I just have a bunch of extra pieces, just go ahead and add your foam. And it's going to protect the back side of your card as well. So go ahead and add all of your foam to the back. And then we're going to build one more together. And I'm going to show you how a different way of using it, but same. I had all my scissors sitting here. <laughs> they have vanished. <laughs> it's, the, it's the case of the disappearing scissors, I swear. So it's just something kind of fun. I love interactive cards. I think they're so cool. I have so many little bits of adhesive left over from stuff. This one's nice and curvy, so it'll go in here. I definitely need to add some adhesive into this space. Oh, here's a little bit here. Oh, that's kind of, it doesn't have much sticky left in it. So I'm just showing you how to build. I'm sorry, I'll speed this up. I'm wasting a lot of time right now talking and chatting. There we go. Okay. So pull all the tape off. Get all this mess out of here. Find where all my tapey bits are. 
So I hope everybody's doing good. We're trying to stay low key here at the house. Just chilling, doing our thing. Oh, okay. Crafting is my therapy. <laughs> All right, now I gotta make sure that nothing is sticking. So again, I like to come in and kind of move. I, ca I can't grab the brad now. So I'm actually gonna pop this off. I got this stuck. My brad got stuck behind. Okay, so just wanna make sure my mechanism is all working here. So I, this is another thing I will do is I will come in and go, okay, is everything still attached? Is everything still good? It is. And so here is my card. Ooh, ooh, there we go. See, as I stuck everything down, I kind of twiddled and fiddled and got things kind of misaligned. So you have to kind of make sure that everything. So if you're handing it to somebody, just make sure that they're good. There we go. This little guy likes to kind of stick down. I have found that if you put too large of an item here, it can kind of fuddle things up. Um, and I made this even more difficult by adding, instead of having it free floating, that I put something in the way. So that caused it. It's a little bit of a harder design. I was like, oh, I got to make this cute. <laughs> and then I made it way more complicated than it needed to be. Don't want to push that down too hard. And then there it is. Ta-da. Little movement here. All right. So... That is the card. If you want to put a sentiment up there, I think I'm going to go in and in the stamp set that I have, let me show you the stamp set. We have this gorgeous stamp and it says beautiful day. And I think I'm just going to stamp it on the inside and really letting the mechanism be the fun part of this card. And there we go. Just like that. Ta -da. Okay. So now on to the other one. I thought this one was kind of cute. I thought it'd be kind of fun to have this hot air balloon flying through the sky. I just thought that was kind of fun, right? So, but that doesn't make sense, this little mechanism right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and build this. And I wanna have this piece out here. So I have my brads, extra brads, just gonna grab one. Remember all the brads are gonna be on the front side of the card. This one just happened to be built the same way because I liked the idea of the hot air balloon. It didn't make sense to go this way. It didn't make sense to go this way. So I thought it was like, oh, it's flying. Um, but you could have a vertical card. I mean, if that could have worked too, I don't know. It happened to like, just for the grins and giggles for this particular card, the design made sense the way that it, it was from the previous card. Not that I tried to have it do that way. All right, so putting my Brad in here. Pink. All right. This is moving freely. Now, here's the fun part. If you don't have the two dial system, meaning that you don't want to have two things moving, and this is the part that's kind of cool. So right now we have two things that are in tandem moving together, and that's what this little extra arm does for you and this other extra slide. What if I just want to have one thing moving? What if I don't want to have to worry about? Then don't put the other, don't, don't attach this. Just leave it off, right? And so now all I have to do is I have to add in my brad on the front, that one's really too big. Sometimes I re I've realized that this piece in here is really, really wide compared to some other ones. I don't know why some are wider than others, but I have different brands maybe, and these are all just in the same kind of kit. So there we go. So I'm just going to pop that on there. And now I just have a die. See, I made that way too tight. I twisted it and it feels like I'm, I'm forcing it, it just feels too tight. So one thing I will do, and you'll notice if you try and do this, is I will come in and I'll just twist my brad back and forth making, because maybe my little tines were too big. And then I'll just make sure I don't squeeze it too tight. And oh, so much easier, it slides so much easier, right? Easy peasy, that mess out of the way. And now I don't even need to use this part. So if I don't wanna have the two tiles going together, I can have a single dial. And now I just have my balloon that's gonna go flying up into the sky, right? So this gives you another way to make a card. All you have to do now is cover that up. So I'm just gonna do a really simple cover up, which is I'm gonna add a little sticker down here and just cover that up. And so it doesn't even exist, right? <laughs> and then I can come in with this and pop this on here. Again, I tend to like to add my adhesive. I think I'm at the end of my adhesive, which sucks. There we go. 
I don't think I'm going to get any on there. So I'm just going to use a little pop dot. I think that at the end, it's end and it's kind of going, what are you doing? Uh, double sided tape. I like my Xyron. It's just, it's at its end. Don't add too much on. You only want the brad to be sticky. And I really don't need to add a pop dot. I just don't have anything else handy. And I don't go rummaging around because I thought I had enough adhesive on there. Apparently I don't. And then my little balloon. And oops, so I want to make sure my balloon is facing the right way. There we go. <laughs> it's it's kind of turning. There was a way to do that so it doesn't move around on you. So you got to kind of finagle it. Like, how do I want my balloon to go? And there we go. That's kind of cool. Now I have a little hot air balloon that's flying up into the sky, right? And I've covered up the other mechanism. So you can do a singular. You could have a rocket shooting up and then just put your sentiment down there. And it takes away the other element. So it gives you two different ways of using this particular dial. So it's a little dial that you can use. And my hot air balloon is flying up into the sky. I could have also done it this way um, and covered up this. I would still have to have the mechanism there because that's what's attached to the main dial. But what if I just wanted something to go up and down or side to side, then just pop up and cover up this section so that it doesn't exist. So that's another way to use the die. So you can have a curve or you can have a line or you can have them both working together. So you kind of get three different ways of making interactive card out of that. Flowers at the bottom, butterfly, fly. yeah, see, so cool. You could have so many different ways. So yeah, this could be a little butterfly that's flying out and you have a bunch of flowers down here. So many different things that you can do. So this is just another fun one. And just to show you how it looks on a card. So it would just look like this. And you know, I can, I didn't want to go overwhelming, but you could definitely play play with this one. And in my um, stamp set, I've got um, a sun, took it out of sun up here and you stamp and color and cut that out. So there's some fun things I could do or add like a little banner. So I can kind of play around with that. But I just wanted to show you guys the mechanism more than anything, which I thought is a really cool mechanism. So turn it this way, turn it this way. <laughs> you can even have it coming from the top. It really depends on which way you want to have it. You could have it coming from here. So just think of all the different directions that things can fly. Um, and also you can also, like I said, for this particular one, because the watering can, the way it was faced initially, I had the card and it was facing this way. I'm like my watering can, it won't water. And I thought, well, Aaron, you can just flip it around and have it go the other direction and it works just fine. So your stamps can work either direction. You just got to keep in mind when you're cutting out your paper, um, you face your die the correct direction. If you're just doing solid color paper, don't worry about it. But I had a pattern here. And when I first cut this one out, I had to make sure the pattern made sense. And then for this, I wanted the pattern to make sense. So it was kind of like, I don't know, I was trying to go for grass and sky. It didn't work quite well, but you get the idea. Ta -da! Pretty fun stuff. So thank you guys so much for joining me to learn how to make these interactive cards. These It's called a double dial die. It's a big mouthful. <laughs> So it's a double dial. Oh, this is the snowman one I was talking about, how the snowman and the snowman's like rising up to catch it. She put, if you don't want your little piece to show, I could have, and I, maybe I'll do that here in a second. I might change this up and add a banner going across and just make sure I don't cover up my little brad. Or I could put something on top. Of it. I mean, you can get creative. I just wanted to show you another way to use the, the dial system with the balloon. So double dial brad or double dial Double dial die. That's, that's really hard to say. Try and say that fast. Let me tell you, <laughs> that's a mouthful. <laughs> and then I used my uh, stamp and thin cuts, the beautiful day set from close to my heart with the blue skies papers. Super cute stuff. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hope you guys enjoy this fun little interactive. They're just fun to move. I, I don't have this one attached. They're just fun to move. It, it's just enjoyable to kind of play around with them. There is a tiny bit of a learning curve to learn some of the ins and outs about like making sure that you don't have anything, especially like this one's easy because nothing's touching it. But here, because I got layer and layer and layer and I have that, it's a little bit more complicated, but you don't have to make it as complicated as what I did for this card. All right. Thank you guys so much. Please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you've not already. Our supply links are down below and I will see you again later. Bye, everybody. Oh, the company. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is TLC Designs. That's the name of the company that made the big dial system. Pretty cool. Bye-bye.